What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Shaf, aka That Mill Guy, coming at you with a video that I've slowly been growing on, I should say. Something that I've been seeing more and more as some of y'all have been posting your list, going back to the LGS, and trying to find ways to eke out that extra win, or just wondering why you're going negative, or just kind of trying to find that success with modern mill and i'm here to provide you with those answers i'm here to tell you that you're losing because you're not playing a certain few cards i'm here to give you the spice so i got five cards that you need to be putting in your modern mill deck not all five maybe one of them maybe three of them whatever it is but these are the cards that you need to take that game to the next level so first and foremost we're going to start off with an honorable mention and now for this one i got to put out a disclaimer you can't take me completely seriously on this one this one is mostly just about a little bit of salt i have with the archetype known as velamachus turns or indomitable creativity combo now what card am i talking about well the thumbnail kind of gave it away i believe the card i'm looking for oh if my tabs will switch is bitter ordeal now this is a card that's interested people for so long i think a lot of i think any mill player a player sorry i should say has gone through the moment of wow this card is absolutely the most broken card in magic ever made and then they read it properly and they're like nah this is just super underpowered so grave storm specifically is the mechanic behind this so this is essentially a surgical extraction except you can't really look at your opponent's hand or graveyard so a big caveat there but the gravestorm uh, mechanic allows you to play copy this spell for each time a permanent would leave the battlefield this turn now obviously permanent being you know stuff like fetch lands uh, specifically an enchantment like dress down could also uh, come into play when you're playing against stuff like grixis dead shadow a deck that fetches a lot and plays dress down but specifically against indomitable creativity combo they will create a lot of tokens and try and um try and sacrifice those tokens to get out a Velamachus, uh, the big dragon, or an Emrakul out. Now, the deck can be very frustrating to play against, um, especially once they get a Teferi out and some other pieces out. And if they have a Teferi out, things become can become a little bit tricky here with this card. But again, we're not taking me completely seriously here. If your opponent casts Indomitable Creativity, sacrifices those creatures, or just finds another way to remove those permanents and get something else out, well, look... This is going to be able to be a funny meme way for you to get around that and take out the Emrakul, take out the Velmachus, take out some key cards depending on how many permanents left that turn. Maybe they fetched a little bit and you're then able to snipe out those key cards. Now again, not a serious mention, just an honorable mention because I hate that deck so much. So I figured I would finally do this card some service and uh, show that it does have some value in the modern meta. Remember, it says permanence. Um, so I thought that was that was super fun that way. But let's get into the real list here. Number five, we are talking about ooh, Emrakul the Aeon's Torn. Now, this card is specifically in more so a competitive meta aspect. So if you're playing in a bigger tournament, maybe not so much at your LGS, but honestly, I have been uh, having people tell me that more and more mill players uh, or more and more magic players, modern players have adopted the mill archetype at their LGS. So they're no longer the only soul miller there. So a great way to respect the mirror. If you already have uh, the counter spell package, I'm thinking of cards like mystical dispute to help against that matchup. Well, this is that extra oomph that they might not be ready for. They might've cast that surgical that they had in their hand against your archive trap all right, cool, they're milling you out, but all of a sudden, they mill over the Emrakul's Aeon Sworn, you shuffle everything back in, even the mill spells that you've already used, they can now be used because you can draw them again. So great way to gain that extra spice against the mirror. So I thought I would bring it up, pretty important, but more so in a competitive aspect where you will actually run against uh, more mill players, but especially an LGS scene, local scene that has the mirror, gotta play this. Next up, we have a test of talents. Now, this has honestly become a pet card that I feel like I have really proven has been a very functioning card and a lot of people have adopted for very good reasons. Think of Counterspell with Surgical Extraction tucked onto it. Now, 
obviously there's some limitations. You're only able to counter an instant or sorcery. So this is not going to be coming into value in a lot of matchups. So specifically, I want to be using this against something like burn, where you are able to counter stuff like lightning bolt and take out all those copies. You're not worried about those top decks and countering stuff like again, counter spell against the blue white, uh, blue white control decks, and then even some key combo strategies, right? You're able to counter living end exile all copies with this. So especially against those matchups where you're not able to find any mill cards, you don't have that turn one Hedron Crab. This is great because, okay, I haven't milled it in their graveyard. I can't surgical it. I can counter it and then surgical all the copies. So a fantastic, uh, super sleeper style of sideboard card. I, I really do not see anyone in the meta playing this card at all and and i cannot recommend it enough i a lot of the times when i'm casting this card on mtgo my opponent pauses to read the card when i'm casting it in paper my opponent asks hey can i read that what does that even do so you're really really going to be surprising people for this one so uh while it's nice and hot and super spicy highly recommend you know slotting in two to three copies of this card um and surprising your spell-based opponents with it Next up, we have number three, getting a little better this time, Extirpate. Now, especially with a lot more instant speed uh, things running around in the format and a lot more counter spells available to the spell-based strategies, is nice to be able to, before you get anything done, you would tend to kind of surgical maybe a, a counter spell, Archmage's Charm, or whatever it is, and you might be able to just get those out of the way, but especially against combo strategies like Living End or the Rhinos deck, well, they're probably going to have something like Force of Negation or something like Endurance up to react to your Surgical Extraction. So something like Extirpate with Split Second, extremely valuable in being able to get that card out and then your opponent saying, well, my interaction literally can't do anything thanks to Split Second. So even just a one of copy in the sideboard is a great way to hedge against and provide a little bit of extra combo hate especially if your meta is full of tron i mean not only is it combo hate but it's an extra copy of surgical for a matchup like that now remember of course even with split second i actually had some newer players ask me this every so often split second does not get around chalice of the void so this is still going to get countered it's just that your opponents can't react to it but you know chalice of the void is just an effect all right it's not a necessarily a uh, a response or whatever uh, you're thinking of there. So it's still going to get countered in that aspect, uh, but definitely an extra piece of surgical can be very valuable in a meta like this. All right, rearing up on number two here, we got hide and seek. Now this one's super, super, super sweet. And it, it's much more relevant now that modern mill really is a tier one deck. Um, and I know a lot of you don't want mill to be a tier one deck. A lot of you are like, oh, you know what? Tier two as a strat is fine. You know, specifically, you know, users like uh, Sodek MTG on Twitter keeps putting mill as a tier two strategy. You keep doing that, Sodek. I'm more than happy to because the longer that players like that, that people follow, that people understand, keep considering mill as a tier two deck they will not bring in the hay for it and i'll keep i'll keep eating your graveyard strategies i'll keep eating your combo strategy for breakfast let me tell you let me tell you the other day blitz mtg went on this super high streak with esper mill we just had dre on the mill discord go super high with esper mill not running up against any of these graveyard strategies or any of these combo strategies that you know sodax playing like we're just eating you for baby food so the longer you consider us underpowered the less you'll need this card. But of course, as Mill becomes better and better, Seek is a great way to get rid of that one of Emrakul, the one of Kozilek, whatever it may be as a shuffle effect in your opponent's deck. Now the hide part, obviously not really that relevant. You're, you're not gonna really get there, okay? So even if you're playing three color, um, it's very rare that you're gonna be playing maybe a fourth copy, uh, fourth color for hide. I mean, there is value in something like playing Esper Mill. You could play something like a Rogran Triome so that you can actually have access to four colors. Now that Triome is actually a deeper tech for something like, uh, sorry, Prismatic Ending where you can now hit four drops. Uh, but now with Hide and Seek, maybe you wanna cast that for whatever reason, it is valuable artifact and enchantment, but it's really the seek getting rid of the shuffle effect that's most valuable to the mill player. So nice little sideboard card um, in the end there and could just be a great way to 
get around the soul guide lantern aspect of things where okay you need to mill them you need to find the emerald cool blah 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 but i uh, just cast seek take it out and then you just start deploying your crabs start deploying your mill spells just go ham right and at the worst case scenario if you see a second shuffle effect you have that information right it's valuable that way but now moving on we finally see our number one card that you need to play to up the ante fluster storm now this is a card that i do not see anyone playing and how do i know that i'm not even playing it i'm not even playing it but this is definitely one of those powerhouse one of sideboard cards that you will get got by so many times with the meta becoming so spell heavy in the sense that there are there are decks that really stick to the board and try and search this up with urza saga or just kind of play low to the ground threats or you're playing something like blue eye control you're playing something like living in combo rhinos whatever it is you got spells like that that are so valuable but those decks have backup counter spells for their big threats guess what fluster storm most of the time is two to three maybe even four to five counter spells in one right because remember for each instance of storm it casts another copy of the spell so even if your opponent has a counter spell for it they can only counter one copy of it and then they're having to pay the tax for the subsequent copies of this card now obviously it's something that your opponent can play around or Un unwillingly be ready for of course if they're casting something for one cmc two cmc and they have like three mana left open not the best card in the world but a great way to just like say i gotcha in an opponent uh in a post board matchup where your opponent is casting a spell and they have one mana for mystical dispute guess what that dispute means nothing you're casting multiple copies of a spell like this definitely lights out uh something that i'm definitely considering putting in but i really love my test of talents that is the card that i'm playing in my sideboard for counter magic but fluster storm is definitely something to consider and you will definitely see it across the table from you every so often the blue white control players love 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 this card or any type of blue dominant strategy this is something to consider heck even spell pierce might be making a comeback in some way but for now it's fluster storm and this is what we got. You got to play this card. It doesn't need to be multiple copies. Just play one great way in the mirror, spell-based strategies, everything. I'm, I'm really just repeating myself at this point, but you got to play this. Relatively expensive, I would say. Definitely a legacy staple, obviously. That's what's really keeping the price of this card high. But obviously, modern legal, uh, thanks to the master sets, or the horizon sets, I should say. So that's really going to end off the video there kept it nice and simple relatively shorter video i do blabber on a lot with a lot of my videos uh, that go to talking points but let me know what you think in the comment section down below what did you think of the cards that i mentioned do you actually think that gravestorm is not a meme and it does have some value let me know just just validate me please please i i, I want I want that card to work, and I also want Velimaka's turns to stop being a good deck. That deck is so frustrating to play against, but yeah, comment section down below. But that's going to wrap up the video. Remember that even the impossible is possible, and as we ponder that thought, I hope you'll join me next time as we take a glimpse into the unthinkable.